So let's talk about cam timing for a minute. Cam timing is often overlooked on you know, cam manufacturers. When you buy a cam or when you get one custom ground, they will tell you what they want the intake center line on. Now, when they give you this uh, recommendation for intake center line, of course, when you're putting it together, you put it together, you put the degree wheel on it, and you make sure you set it up at that, that point. That's your baseline. Um, when they give you a recommendation, what they're doing is they're telling, they're, they're assuming you have optimal intake ports, optimal exhaust, optimal intake, and everything is just right. So it could vary a little bit to make maximum horsepower and maximum torque. So when you get a cam, you'll have a cam card. And on that cam card, it'll tell you what the intake center line needs to be. And it could be anywhere from 106 degrees to 114 degrees. Now the cam manufacturer, when you get a custom camshaft, so when you call Little John Motorsports and you say, I need a custom cam for this, he's gonna ask you about your setup. You know, what you have, what you've done, um, what kind of heads you have, you know, is it a race car, is it a street car, is it a street strip car, your turbo, your transmission, your torque converter, your rear end gear, compression ratio, uh, cylinder heads, uh, fuel, fuel injectors, intake, throttle body, all that stuff makes a difference when you get a custom cam. So what happens with the custom cam is he specs it out. He picks the lobes and he picks, you know, what the intake center line should be, be on. And so what happens is, you know, that is theoretical, you know, where he thinks it's gonna run the best or the cam designer thinks it's gonna run the best. They are assuming that the car is exactly as you said, and you know the the torque converter is not a 2,000 torque converter when you said it's a 4,500 RPM torque converter. So it's got to be everything like you said, assuming you've got a good tune in the car. So the the, the tune up is is straight and it's right, and there's no issues with that. Um, you know the the car is going to make the power that you think it's going to make. Um, the camshaft is the heart of the combination. I mean, you've got to have a properly spec camshaft. Now you can get out there and half-ass it and get a camshaft that is reasonably close and it'll run reasonably fast, but it's not going to be the best it could be. So custom cams are, you know, almost always the way to go. But when they, they spec these things out, they tell you they want it on a certain intake center line. So when you're, when you're setting it up, you're going to put it in and you're going to use a degree wheel. There's some great big ones, there's some small ones. And then you put this thing on and you know there's some good videos out there on how to degree a camshaft so you want to go through those steps and you want to you know find the what the intake center line is now a lot of people they just go ahead and get they go okay well i'm gonna put it in dot to dot so dot to dot is good so that's your starting ratio and so on this one you can see dot to dot this is the the dot here and it goes in between these two here times they will grind advance into the camshaft and so what happens in that point, so they tell you, uh, it'll usually say plus four, plus six. That means it's got a little bit of advanced ground into it. If it's 116 lobe separation, and they want the intake center line at 112, so if it says plus four, then it may be already ground in there. And so when you put it dot to dot like this, when you put your degree wheel on it, it's gonna, it's gonna show up at 112 degrees. And if it does not, then you have to move something. There's tolerances in this crank gear. So this is the, the way that it goes on the crankshaft with the with the keyway. So if that's moved just a tad by accident or if it's moved the you know either way by accident, it's gonna throw off your variance. Same thing goes with your, your cam gear up here. If there's anything that is off, I mean the slack in it, it could be one or two degrees off. I mean, this is very precise when you put it in. And a lot of people just guess and they assume that everything is good and all the manufacturers, you know, they're 100% perfect. If the cam gear is off one degree advanced and then the crank gear is off one degree advanced, then potentially you're gonna be way advanced without even knowing it and it's still within tolerance. So always make sure that you actually check the intake center line. And these, a lot of people just put them dot to dot and they just roll with it, but they could be leaving a lot of power on the, on the table car could be running really good but it could run better if you checked it so and then at that point once you determine once you got the wheel on it for this setup and jezels are the same this is a um, set of CV products essentially what you do is this is my dot to dot and this is my advanced and retard and so basically what happens you loosen these four bolts 
and then this piece slides and then where this is on the lines on on the uh, the middle is what indicates to you what the actual if you're advancing it and retarding it generally when you advance the camshaft it makes it to more torquey down low and it will also uh, shorten the power band up a little bit it gives more crank and compression so you know you have to be careful with your timing when you're uh, advancing the cam a lot usually you want to go in two degree increments either way whichever way you're going if you're trying to kill a little bit of bottom end maybe gain a little bit of um, rpm up top then you would retard the camshaft uh, from the intake center line but the thing is the key thing is that the thing to remember the thing to think about and always remember is get it where the cam manufacturer recommends it from the start and then make some passes and then if you think you can pick up whichever way you decide to go move it two degrees at a time now this setup is much easier to do because it's external it's dry i can simply loosen these bolts on the car and adjust it if you have a setup where uh it's in the if it's a wet uh chain or if it's like a normal uh, you know sprocket set um some of them are adjustable but the thing is is you have to take the whole front of the motor off and you know pull everything apart which is still worth it it's worth the effort to to do it um it's a trial and error you got to make passes you got to see what happens when you when you make the change and if it's good or not um you know and sometimes you'll you'll make the change and it'll be worse and then you you know you're kind of kicking yourself in your butt but you, you never know until you try it so you, you make that change and then if it doesn't work then you pull it all back apart and you change it again um you know but if you can if the if the if the pocket's there and the money's right and you know you're able to uh you know spend a little bit of extra money for it it's worth it to have some type of external belt drive to where you can adjust it on the car at the track and these are adjustments you can make while you're at the track um where you're you know back to back essentially uh make a pass advance or a retard the camshaft and you know make another pass and i've done that and advancing the camshaft four degrees and the ET was one tenth faster with the camshaft advanced on mine. So by advancing the camshaft, it made the dynamic compression ratio higher, made the engine more efficient, and made the turbo spool faster. Picking up a tenth of a second by making that small change is huge at the speed I'm going. Every car is different, but from what I have seen on my cars, intake center line of 110 to 112 degrees generally is the fastest but you'll only know what works best on yours by getting to the track and making passes. All right, please like, share, and subscribe. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.